everyone, this is a video tutorial to help you understand how inductive electron withdrawal can affect the pKa of a compound. So unlike most other cases like hybridization, electronegativity, or size, you're not only concerned with the atom that is attached to the hydrogen. So if we first look at this compound here, oxygen is the one we're going to first pay attention to because oxygen is the one that's going to lose the hydrogen and thereby gain a negative charge. So if we kind of consider that, let's remove this hydrogen and we're going to add a negative charge to that O. We need to see, is there anything else in this compound that could potentially stabilize that negative charge? You stabilize negative charges by spreading them out or delocalizing them. So over here, if this oxygen's on this end, we see a fluorine on this end. We know that fluorine is a very electronegative substance, so it does have an ability to pull through the sigma bonds at those electrons. So its effect wouldn't necessarily be massively significant, but it would have enough effect where this negative charge would have a diminishing to it, thereby stabilizing this compound. When we're looking at the inductive electron withdrawal, there are two things that it's going to be affected by. The first is the electronegativity of atom, okay? And in this case, we're talking about the electronegativity of the atom that does not bear the charge. It's the atom that would help bear the charge. The second thing is going to be the proximity. So the closer this atom is to the atom that has the charge on it, the more stabilizing it'll be. So let's take a look at a few examples. Okay, so let's take a look at this first example. So in this case, we're going to be focusing on the electronegativity of the atom that will be able to inductively electron withdraw. So in this case here, we have these three compounds. So now we want to rank them from most to least acidic. So we take a look at this first compound. Unlike these guys, there is no atom that could help pull at the negative charge that would develop on the oxygen once the hydrogen left which means there's nothing to stabilize this, so this would have to be the least acidic of the bunch. Then I look at these two. So now remember, it is the oxygen that's going to be getting the negative charge. They're identical. So now I'm thinking, what other differences do I see? Well, in this case here, I have a fluorine, and in this case here, I have a bromine. They are placed at an identical distance from the oxygen that has the negative charge. So now, because fluorine is a lot more electronegative than bromine, it's going to have an easier time pulling at those electrons and thereby diminishing the negative charge on the O. So because they have the same proximity and this is more electronegative, this would be the most acidic followed by this guy. Because once it lost its hydrogen and the negative was developed, the fluorine is able to pull at the electrons and make that negative charge less significant. So basically the electrons are going to be spread out a little bit more. Okay, so let's take a look at one more example. So in this case, we're going to focus on the proximity of the atom. So over here, just as in the other cases, we have an oxygen that has a hydrogen attached to it. This oxygen is going to lose the hydrogen, and when it loses the hydrogen, it will develop a negative charge. We're trying to find out if there are any ways that negative charge can be stabilized by anything else in the compound. Now, in this case, all three compounds have a very electronegative fluorine sitting in them. The only difference is how close that fluorine is to the oxygen that will develop the negative charge. So let's take off all of the hydrogens and add the negatives in its place so that we can have a better visual. So now, this fluorine is right next to that oxygen. So that means that this fluorine will have the easiest and greatest impact upon the oxygen at pulling those electrons away from it and allowing it to diminish that negative charge down a bit. So because this one is the closest, this would be the most acidic when we're looking at the one that has the hydrogen on it. In this case here, this would be the least acidic because the fluorine is the farthest away, so it has a harder time making a great impact upon the oxygen by pulling those electrons away from it. So this would have been the least acidic, and this one here would be in the middle.